Welcome back, everybody. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot, and it is still February 5th. So what I like to do on this show is just share my due diligence with you on hot penny stocks, and I got one for you. This is Micro Mobility, ticker MCOM. Now, unlike most of the stocks I share with you, she does not meet that two-fold criteria of being a hot penny stock. I'm always looking for a hot chart and a hot piece of news. Put the two together and voila, you got yourself a hot penny stock. This doesn't meet that in any way, shape, or form. She has not got a hot chart and she has not got any hot news. So why are we looking at it? Because she is finally setting up for a breakout. She had a serious downtrend when it was so far away from the 200 SMA. There was just no hope. Well, now she is not just close. She is showing signs of wanting to break out, even without a catalyst. Now, the company's been going through some hard times here. She went underneath the dollar, and she did a reverse split of 1 in 150. So now we've got ourselves a small float. She didn't get up over a dollar like she was trying to do, and she got kicked off the NASDAQ down to the OTC. Now, it is business as usual, and business is good. However, the stock itself is in peril right now, and as I said, right now, it is showing signs of wanting to climb. So, MCOM finished the day just under three cents, 0 0.0294, and she hit almost one and a half percent gains today. She is on the OTC, the bottom tier, the pink. She is current, and we don't have any other information over here except that. That concerns me because, as I keep telling you all the time, with pink, she don't get any validated information. That green verified profile and that green verified transfer agent is the only validated information you get with pinks. We don't have any right now. So, what is micro mobility about? Well, they tell us they are an intra-urban transportation company that provides micro-mobility services in Italy and the United States. And that's what they do. We're not talking cars. We're talking scooters. Lots of different types of scooters. I've just got one picture here. And you can see where they have them in a lot of different places in America and over in Europe. They say Italy, but they're in a lot of other places than just Italy. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, man, about half of what she normally does, dropping from 652,000 shares down to 362,000 shares. Share structure. Well, this just changed. We now have an outstanding share count of 2.7 million. I have no idea what the float is, but it's never higher than the outstanding share count. So we have got ourselves a low float. It won't be more than 2.7 million shares. Market cap is super low now since the reverse split. Since you take all the shares and you multiply it times the price to get it, we are now down to $78,000. Financials for the company. Well, they're making money and it's increasing. From 2020 to 2022, they've jumped from $4.4 million to $15.5 million. But that's not all that's jumped. So as their loss of profits. For every dollar they make, they're losing more. They were down $26 million at the end of 2022. Looking at her quarterlies, they're looking even worse, aren't they? They're making less money and they're still not pulling in any profits. Darn. Take a look at that balance sheet. Cash in the bank. They've got themselves about $962,000. Total assets of about $9.5 million. Oh, and a lot of liabilities, about $62 million, which means we're holding a very heavy bag here of over $52 million. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company. All right, we're not going to go into all these, but I want you to take notice here. See all these 42.4 B2s and B8s? All right, back here, one of these 8Ks, they made a deal with an investment company that is putting money into the company. And each one of these 42 fours is them offering the investors more shares to buy. And it looks like they keep taking them up on it. Then we've got an 8K here that tells us that they got kicked off of the NASDAQ down to the OTC. And that pretty much covers all of these filings here. So let's take a look at that news. So we've got a few pieces of news here to consider. I have gone back uh, about halfway through December. 
Micromobility slashes debt by $9.25 million in a strategic financial triumph. They need to get rid of some debt. They've got a lot of that. On the 19th of December, the company postpones a special meeting and withdraws the reverse split request. Now, folks, this came out on the 19th. The reverse split on the chart shows that it happened on the 12th, I think. So why they bring out this piece of news, I don't know. And as a matter of fact, if we come back over here to the share structure, if you scroll down here, where is it? Right there. Dividends and splits. Click the splits. They tell us on the 4th, they did a reverse split of 1 and 150. So why in the heck they told us on the 19th they were withdrawing the reverse split? What are they going to do? Put all the shares back on the market? I've never heard of such a thing. Looks like the split went through. No matter what they said, we now have only 2.1 million, 2.7 million shares outstanding. And then the last piece of news that came out on the 21st, the company continues progress with Atlas Special Opportunities amidst the NASDAQ delisting and celebrates Hopium's advancements. Basically, they've made a deal with the company so that they can now start moving their scooters over into the Asian countries. I don't know which ones, but that's an entirely new market for them. So the company's doing business. They've got debt, but they've got a chart that looks like it's ready to break out. And just for that reason alone, I am looking at this stock. Maybe it's not the type of play you're interested in. In either case, we're going to go look at that chart right now. So let's chart MCOM over here at my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We're looking at a one day, one year chart for micro mobility, and we got a high a year ago of $1,935, he says with a straight face. <laughs> that is what it says, folks. I'm not lying. They're lying. It never hit that. So, why is that there? Because they adjusted the chart for the reverse split on December 4th. What am I talking about? Well, normally what we see on a reverse split is a big green bar where the price jumps, whatever the ratio is. Here it was 150. So whatever the price was, it would have jumped up 150 times and we'd have had this big green bar. Well, rather than have one big tall green bar on the chart, they get rid of it by multiplying everything behind the reverse split by that ratio. 150. So everything behind the reverse split cannot be trusted. You'll have to divide it by 150, including the high of $1,950, which is over $15, I think. So let's come on down to that six month, four hour view. You can see she had that strong fall and she's been under the 200 here for a very long time. And I would like to zoom in on it for you, but you can't see a whole lot of detail, but you can see she has stopped falling. It was right here on the 21st of December. She hit floor. We are here at about six and a half cents and she has just been going sideways, hitting her ultimate low here of 1.8 cents. Now I could try to zoom in more, but it's not going to show us a whole lot. But the 20 day one hour view gives us all the details we're looking for. We've got ourselves an atypical breakout chart. 200 day SMA coming down fast and furious like a ski slope, leveling off into the parking lot, allowing passengers to climb aboard. And that's what we see here. Off of the low bubble, she has started to work her way up very slowly. She got on top of the 50, kept pushing towards the 200, hitting a high here of just under four cents. So we've got basically a 100% run here in the last six days. Now she has pulled back. She's bounced off over 20 and she's starting to climb again, folks. Oscillators are looking pretty decent. Our PPO is on the right side of the pink line and pushing up. Our ADX is falling. Whenever your PPO is climbing and your ADX is falling, guaranteed your price is climbing. I like those two oscillators side by side. Our MACD we just had a negative crossover, but she's trying to get back up right now. And her RSI took a dip from about 68 to 50, and she's pushed back up to 57, and she's trying to climb right now. Our volume isn't very strong. It's about average for what she's been doing. 
coming down to our five day, five minute. There's our low bubble in this corner. We like to see that. We are at 1.8 cents. High bubble in this corner. Love to see that. Here we are at virtually 4 cents, 3.9. She was on top of her 200 haul, working her way up across the 200 day SMA, bouncing off of her 20 as she's climbing. Today she had a nice bounce, right without any catalyst. She was here at virtually 3 cents. Jumped up to four cents, came back down, landed on our 50-day SMA, dropped underneath it, and right now she is pushing back up. She is still underneath her 50, she's underneath her 200, and our 20 is pushing down. But we've got to change a trend on our 200. She was falling, went flat yesterday, and today she is climbing. Osculators, everything was definitely getting weak. But the aftermarket period has turned everything around. Our PPO is starting to climb and our ADX is falling. That's a perfect sign of climbing. We have a strong turnaround here on our MACD getting ready to cross the line. She's pushing up. And our RSI hit a bottom here of 40 and is now at 50. A little bit cool. This is a dark horse, folks. She hasn't got any catalyst. It'd be nice if some news came out. She does have some debt, but we're looking at a pop. She is at that position of wanting to break out on that one hour chart. That's the four hour. <laughs> she is there. She is showing signs of wanting to do something. It's not super strong, but it is super early. That's why we put it on our watch list. If we see volume coming into this, she tags that 200. You could get a nice pop that you could take some gains from. Now, you may want to do some more due diligence. I know there wasn't much to look at, but there are things going on. As I said, business is getting better. They are cutting debt. So doing due diligence isn't going to hurt you one bit. You know what I say? Say it for me. Can't hear you. That's right. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.